Hey, welcome to Color Up. Today we're gonna to look at the 12 things you should never do at the crafts table. Let's get right to it. Don't hand your money directly to the dealer. They can't take it from you. Place it in the cum or on the felt right in front of you. Don't try to buy in in the middle of the roll when the puck is on. Wait for the puck to go off before buying in. Now the average roll is eight and a half rolls, so you won't have to wait long. If you think you're gonna miss out on that super long roll and you do buy in, the game's gonna be paused while they count up your money and count out your chips. And then after that long pause of the game, the seven comes and now you're gonna be the most hated person at the table. If you really wanna get in in the middle of the hand when the puck is on a number, go play a hand of blackjack or just go to the cage and get some chips. If you have chips and you come to the table, and you wanna get in the middle of the game, that's fine, you can make some bets, but don't try to buy in when the puck is on. Wait for the puck to go off. Don't bet the six and eight improperly. They get paid seven to six, so you should always bet in increments of six. If you bet $10, that $10 pays eleven sixty-seven, dollars and the casino's gonna round you down to 11. So $10 is going to win 11. If you bet properly, $12, your $12 is going to win 14. If you bet 15, that 15 is gonna get paid 1750, and what they're gonna do is they're gonna round down and you're gonna get paid $17. A proper bet of $18, that bet is going to pay $21. So you're basically shorting yourself a dollar every time. Now the dealers might try to help you or suggest betting higher, but you certainly can just bet 10, $15, $20 amounts which would get an improper payoff. As long as it meets the table minimum, it is allowed. But, you know, you're just throwing a dollar away. Don't say the word seven. Now, personally, I don't care. I'm not superstitious. I'm just a little stitious. <laughs> now, once the point is set and we're on a number, 90% of the players, they're betting on numbers and the seven will cause all their bets and all their money to lose. So that's why we avoid saying the word seven at the craps table. So there's other nicknames for it, the devil, the skinnies. I think the most popular, it's usually Big Red. So even if you want to bet on Big Red, you certainly can. Just try to avoid saying the word seven. Don't desecrate the holy table. Think of this as a church or a shrine, a mosque, or a memorial to the dice gods. You keep your drinks away. There is a shelf below the table that you can put your drinks, and if you're a smoker, then keep your ashes off the table. You definitely don't want to be this guy. Check it out. Don't drink too much at the table. You could see the previous example for why. Do not remove or call a no action on your don't bets. Let's say the point becomes your five and you don't like that. You are allowed to remove that don't, but you shouldn't. The same with the don't come. Let's say it travels to the six or eight and you're afraid that the six is gonna roll and you're gonna lose your bet, do, you can call no action and get it returned to you, but you don't wanna do that. If it's a number you don't like, just place the bet it for the equal amount. The worst case in this scenario is you'll push. The best case scenario is your place bet wins and you win a couple dollars. Remember with the don'ts, you have to get past the seven for the very first roll and that's where the big trouble is. So if you can avoid that, you've gone through the hard part You've now established a don't, and you are always at the advantage over the casino. So don't remove that bet after you've went through the hard part of getting there. Now, I'm not recommending that you hedge your bets by placing against your don'ts, but I'm saying it is a lot better option than removing your don'ts. There is no number seven because we try not to say that number at the craps table and we want to avoid it as much as possible. Don't mess with the dice. Don't switch hands with the dice. Don't take the dice outside of the table. You'll definitely hear from the dealers if you do these type of things. Don't blow on the dice or kiss the dice like maybe you've seen in the movies. That's just disgusting. If you wanna set your dice to a particular number or you think setting them might affect the outcome of the roll, then you certainly can do that. Just don't take forever doing it. You'll see people looking around for their numbers and they just can't find them. Here's a little tip. The opposite side of the dice always equals seven. So we have a five here. If you're looking for the two, we know it's on the opposite side. So you can just flip it over and there's your two. The opposite side of this three is gonna be the four. And there it is. So it's just that quickly. If you're showing a one, you know the six is on the other side. You could set that 
and then we want a five, it's on the opposite side, and then you're off for your throw. Don't play $25 tables. Let's boycott them. Let's come together and refuse to play. If no one plays at $25 tables, they'll be forced to bring them back down to $15 tables at least. I wish we could boycott $15 tables, but I think that ship has sailed. So I get it. Maybe you're a high roller and you don't want to be bothered with players like me with my measly $12 six and eight bets. Well, you guys can play at the $50 tables, that's fine. But the $25 tables are starting to become too common, especially for folks in the East Coast. So let's band together and let's force them to get rid of the $25 table. Don't make late bets. Once the dice rolls and the stick man pulls the dice to the middle of the table, you'll have plenty of time to make your bets. If the table is super fast and lots of bets are happening, place your bet here on this line if you think maybe the dealer didn't hear you. So if you place your bet right here on this line between the field and the cum, the dealer's not gonna know, is it a field bet, is it a cum bet? So he's gonna be forced to ask you, what is this bet? So remember, this is only if you can't get his attention or something like that. So if it's on the line, he's gonna say, whose bet is this and what do you want? I want 44 inside, sure. There's your $6 and change and he'll set, you, set up your bets. If your money is here on the table and they haven't set up your bets and the dice are about to move to the player, they, they may take your bet verbally. What do you want with that bet? You can call it out. They'll repeat the bet back to you and you have a verbal bet in place. So when the dice roll, you know, then he'll set you up and hopefully you won. Now you'll see a lot of tables that are marked no call bets. And that means you're calling out a bet without actually having money on the table. But if you have your money on the table, usually it's not a big problem. Again, you, hopefully you're not getting in the situation. You're making your bets early enough. The last thing you want to do is have your hands inside the table. You're trying to make a bet and the dice are thrown and they hit your hands. A seven is gonna show up, you know, for those that are superstitious, and then you're gonna be the goat of the table. And, you know, again, no one's gonna appreciate that no matter what number rolls. Everyone's gonna yell at you, get your hands out of the table. So make sure you get your bets in early. If the dice are heading the shooter, you should be done betting. Don't be a stiff. Dealers work for minimum wage and rely on your tips to take care of their household, feed their families, or whatever the case is. Sure, maybe the casino should pay them more and take care of them, but that is just not how the system is that we have. I'm not going to tell you how to tip, just that they are appreciated. Now, if you are superstitious, you can also think of tipping as bringing good karma. So make sure you tip your dealers. Don't go on the walk of shame. What I mean by this is don't go to the ATM because you ran out of cash. Bring the amount you wanna play with. If you lose it all, be done with that session. It's just not your day. Come back maybe later after a break or go have some lunch or maybe the next day or try a different game for a little bit. Don't criticize or judge how others play. It is gambling and it is their money. Sometimes the guy betting the props and the field bets, well, he's going to actually win more than the line player with odds and the come bets with odds. Sure, over time, you're going to do better because you have lower house edge bets but craps is a negative EV game. That means expected value, which means in the end, only the casino is going to win. So there you have it, the 13 things I think you shouldn't be doing at the craps table. Now you might have some more ideas and you can go ahead and put those down in the comments. I'd love to read them and maybe I'll make a different video. But if you stick to a lot of these are just etiquette things, you stick to those, you'll have a good time at the craps table. And again, however you like to play, don't criticize others, but good luck on coloring up. Oh,